So Miles, we're here at the back of the collecting yard now. So um, you have a lot of sheds here, I suppose. And how you know, maybe describe the number of sheds you have and the number of cubicles in each. Yeah. Okay. So all the cows are milked in groups of uh, two hundred. Um, all head-to-head -head cubicles, sand bedding on a Wilson mat. Um, yeah, they're all milked in groups of 200, so we have seven main groups, uh, one fresh cow shed, and after a cow is doing 45 litres and clean, she moves into one of a, three high sheds, or if there's a heifer, she moves into one of two first lactation sheds, and then we have one late lactation group uh, for pre-drying off and one small antibiotic group at the end. All the antibiotic cows are kept separate, so there's no risk of uh, antibiotic contamination in the tank. Um, yeah, the milked three times a day, as we've said before. Um, so we start at four o'clock, 12 o'clock and eight o'clock. So how many rows of cubicles to a feed face then, say, or what's two to one. Two to one. We're always two to one, okay. yeah. And is that important, do you find? It is for feed, but I always, three to one always puts stress on feed barrier space. Yeah. We could always have extra feed barrier space at the back of the sheds, but it's just easier to contain the cows where yeah. they are, so just easier to manage. Okay. Mm. The space here then in the middle, what was that? So this start? was originally, when we, when we put more and more sheds on um, over the last five or six years, it was planned that to help with cow flow, yeah. this was going to be, we were going to have a separate entrance and exit to the parlour. So this was going to be to bring cows round the back into the collecting yard this way and then cows would just keep flowing out um, but we've made adjustments to the cow flows on exit yeah to allow time to get the next group round without impacting on cow flow so also supermarkets uh, pushing for uh, a certain part of the lactation maybe for grazing uh, uh, or to have so many days outside then this gives us access to the fields to a grazing and the platform if, around right. the building so we could we could have a group out grazing if we have to in the, okay. in the future and we can bring them in this way. Right, okay, so, yeah, so. I understand. So the movement of cows then and to the collecting yard, you've obviously seven sheds. How do you manage the movement of cows to and from the collecting yard? Or do you have to completely milk a group first or can you queue up? So we have, um, we have an electronic backing gate as well. Yeah. So we milk, um, there's always two groups basically. There's always, so the parlour doesn't stop moving then. Yeah. So there's always two people outside, one person scraping out and one person just moving cows and that's all they do. Um, a group of 200 milked is out the shed and back within 45 minutes. Okay. Um, even when they're waiting for the group in front of them to be milked. So yeah. we're milking about 350 cows an hour at the minute. Okay, and so the person bringing the cows, is he cleaning the, the sheds as well? Yes, there's yeah. two people go into a shed to get them out, clean okay. the beds off um, and then everything's scraped into this central grid network which links up to our lagoon at the end so okay. and the tractor does all the cleaning am i right yes yeah, okay yeah tractor and box scraper yeah okay so and it's very common we would see that there's the tractor scraper versus uh, automatic scrapers there's a preference for that automatic scrapers i just wouldn't even try them on sand okay. i think you yeah. just end up sand and any well sand is evil stuff basically anything that's got wearing parts it will just kill it kill it yeah, yeah. so which we've found <laughs> Great for to cows, be a problem. But not for Perfect. Yeah, yeah. As soon as it's on, as soon as it's out the bed, it's a nightmare basically right. to manage. But yes, yeah. um, yeah, so we've never even looked into auto scrapers for okay. these. So maybe before we walk into cubicle shed, could you describe the straw bedded area here? And yeah. So when we so two years ago, I actually redesigned all the dry cow shed, which is where our existing straw yard was. So we moved everything off carving on straw to just in time carving. So they are moved. Uh, at the point of carving into a carving pen off a sand cubicle. That limited our straw yard space for antibiotic and lame cows. Um, so we built this at the same time just to give us enough space for 25 to 30 cows. Um, not that it's used fully, um, just for a few mastitis and a few lame cows. Yeah. It's close to the parlour. Yeah. So it's mm. for ease of milking. It's close to all of our foot trimming crush setup. So lame cows recover a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah. No major walking to do, and yeah. yeah. Basically, that's for a herd manager. That's where he's looking at, and everything else manages. Yeah. All the other cows manage themselves, type things. Yeah. That's yeah. just. Are they milked as a group then? They're milked as a group, but only twice a day. Okay. We yeah. only we don't milk those at night, just because of, basically, um, basically staff. It's just that insurance policy that milk 
antibiotic milk isn't going to end up in the tank. Okay, so any ant all antibiotic holes are in there? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No room for errors then as such? No. Yeah, yeah. So we might just have a walk through a cubicle shed here just to see yeah, whichever one yeah. you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go through here, yeah. So originally, was that the first shed or in terms of... So was originally, the there's the, there? the four lower down buildings in the middle. Yeah. They were four kennel buildings which were put up in 2007 when we were still... That was when we looked to house uh, the grazing cows in the winter, basically, for yeah. winter housing. Um, so since then, 2007, um, then the first uh, 200 cow sheds here on the left-hand side was done at the same time as the parlour, 2015. Mm. This was done 2017. We then put four uh, 100 cow cubicle sheds up the far end in 2019 and 20. Yeah. And then this shed was completed in July 2022 okay. um, with a plan for another shed mirroring this one to go up the side of the parlour either this year or beginning of next year. More so. cubicles? That'll be another. That'll be a bit bigger. That'll be about 250, I'd have thought. Okay, so yeah. we should get us not too not too far off the 2,000, but not yeah, quite. Yeah. So Very yeah. No. Uh, your squeeze gap here. Useful. Very or useful. Very yeah. useful. Yeah. yeah. Just for yeah. Just easy for people. They tend to leave the loader here for pushing silage back, so it's yeah. just handy for getting through. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you've an overhang anyway as well, overall the feed as well. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starlings, are they an issue here? What? As we have got bird scarers. Yeah. Um, it tends to be as quick as they come this year anyway they go, but yeah. without tempting fate too much. Uh, last year when they did come, they did stay for quite a while and did cause us a bit of, bit of nuisance, but mm -hmm. um, it's the problem with feeding maize in the diet. Starlings love maize, so yeah. that's it's always yeah. going to be something you've got to contend with. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you've wide crossovers anyway? Yes, yeah, plenty of room. Yeah. Yeah. Your troughs are tipping troughs today? You can tip the trough? The older style ones are. Yeah. So again, yeah, this was 2017. Um, we actually prefer the ones we've just put in the new shed, which are shallower but sloping, just with a valve on the bottom. Yeah. We're cleaning water tanks twice a week anyway, so um, they stay fresh and clean. So, yeah. And they're just, again, with a working part and cows, something goes wrong so a nice easy built well built trough is better for us yeah water is important uh, we put up um, we've got three boreholes running uh, to keep it all going um, we've got um, two inch 50 mil mains all round yeah we were running short of water in the four sheds over the far side last summer in the hot weather and uh, we found um, the water, a water company, um, Griffiths Water, they've got a directional drill and they can go under concrete and put a 50 mil pipe all under the yards and connect it in to make a complete ring main and we've got water everywhere now. Right. And it's mm -hmm. very important to have yeah. Um, yeah. full water tanks. Yeah. yeah, probably huge demand for water with oh, yes. 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 massive. Yeah, we're yeah. taking 50,000 litres out off them every day. The first thing they want to do is put a, have a drink when they've when they yeah. 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 finished milking. Yeah, yeah. No. So we have those three boreholes filling a 100,000 litre storage tank um, so there's always backup water supply as well mm. if something does go wrong and it's on a, uh, if it drops below a certain level the mains water kicks in to okay. keep us full so we use, it, we use 250,000 litres a day that's amazing the amount of water it mm. is an amazing amount of water yeah. 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 do you treat that with anything or do you no, test it no, no, yeah. oh it's tested but yeah. I mean it's yeah. not, uh, it's, yeah. not uh, it's, yeah. it's all okay yeah. so you mentioned the cubicles anyway so what have we so they're on sand and what else? Um, so they're on sand, they're on about three to four inches of sand and a Wilson pack mat um, underneath. Uh, Wilson cubicles. Um, we found using these, I've now, we haven't had any, well, the two, the older kennel buildings, sorry, are on deep sand. Um, and we found that installing these saves between 30 to 40% sand per cow per year. The panel mat underneath us, is that Pardon? right? The panel mat underneath is helping. Yeah. yeah. What is actually that doing? Basically, just provides the comfort level that they only need three inches on top. Okay. So they're not. They don't need that. Um, that sort of six to eight inches of sand underneath them. Right. So. Okay. Works well with the with the sloping heel stone into yeah. the mattress, and it creates a bit of a bit of a dish to hold the sand onto the, on the bed. As okay. You can see there, the heel stone is, uh, and we'd like to replicate this in those kennel buildings, mm. um, perhaps this summer. Okay. So. Yeah. So in terms of the 
the work that would happen here with somebody coming in, what, what would they do to the bed here today, say, before after the cows come out for milking? What will they do? So all they'll do is, is scrape any, any muck off. Yeah. Um, they'll pull dry sand back over any areas which yeah. need it, just towards the back. And then we bed up three times a week. So... Um, okay. You'll put more sand more in? More sand in three yeah. times a week, okay. yeah. That's important. With it being only a shallow amount of sand, it's important to keep it at that right amount, um, that sort of three to four inches. Right. So About 120 tonnes of sand a week. Okay. And does that come from far? Uh, no, about three miles away. Yeah. It's a quarry three miles away. Okay. We use that now. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, again, has to be twice to three times a year when we clean the lagoon out yeah. uh, onto maize ground or in the autumn for reseeds. That has to be dug out with a high mac and... Yeah. And, uh, spread it onto the yeah. Yeah. For the extra work, it's worth it. Obviously, it's a it's a process that works for you well. Yeah. 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 The, weight of, to, yeah. the weight of passage miles is that important here? Yes. Yeah, so we're we're 15 foot passages on on feed barrier, and then the central passage is 12 foot. Um, again, we're housing big stronghold signs. and need plenty of space to access feed and water. So it's uh, yeah. Yeah. It's very quiet in here. They're, yeah, they're very content. And then we have well grooved as well. We float in with a deep groove, um, and then I think most of the sheds within two years, sand again. Soon puts the glass film on the top of concrete once it's been scraped three times a day. Um, so becomes, we have it becomes slippy, does it? Has become slippy, yeah. yeah. So we've we've gone with a mini groove straight across as well, okay. and uh, we've seen a lot less problems since we've done that. Okay. Uh, in terms of the length of the shed, how many? Uh, 13 bays, 15 foot, so just about, about 195 foot, yeah. Is that a, a good size for you, or, or is it a size that works well for you in terms of...? Yeah. It's, it works well in terms of the logistics of number of cubicles, number of cows, and the logistics of being able to milk a group quickly and have enough time to scrape them as well. So it does that sort of 180 cubicles, 200 cows works very well for us. Okay. So. Yeah. And you've no crossover in the middle, am I right? No crossover no. in the just middle. At no. the yeah. Just at the ends. Yeah. And that works fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you let the cows out, do all the gates op get opened here, or is it just one gate typically? All of them. Yeah. All three get let out. Yeah. yeah. All okay. three get opened. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> lighting then? Just how important is lighting? Uh, yes. So we're on LED lights. Um, have been ever since we moved into the sheds. They're on a timer for six hours of darkness, and then eighteen hours at two hundred lux. Uh, in theory, these should potentially be on now because yeah. <laughs> it's not quite light enough in here. Yeah. Um, and only just the other day, we've had two rows in here before. Um, it was only yesterday or the day before we just angled every other one slightly towards the feed barrier to try and encourage feed intakes. So at okay. night, yeah. The cubicle itself then, any particular <clears throat> design make on it? What was the, cu that, the cubicle itself? Yeah. Is it a Wilson cubicle? It's a Wilson C50 cubicle, okay. yeah. 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 Has that, how does that perform? Very well. Yeah, yeah very pleased with them. Yeah, cows lie in very well. Um, very good strength in the brackets. Yeah. And uh, of some of the other uh, manufacturers, I, I think. Yeah, it worked well. Yeah. So it's an individual pillar for every cubicle as such, and, or in one? Every yeah. Couple, right? yeah, yeah, right, every, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Yeah. So Miles, we're outside the uh, uh, dry cow shed. Yeah. Uh, like all your sheds, you have them numbered. Why? Uh, ease of training new staff, uh, ease of routine, basically. Um, so we can set, we can basically just say to anybody scraping, uh, or oh, put that cow back in shed four, they know exactly where it is. There's no confusion. It's just straightforward and easy. So right. um, ease of management more than anything. OK. So how big would your dry cow mob be? Um, say at any one time, how many dry cows would you have? So that dry cow shed, uh, yeah, like I said, we designed it a couple of years ago. There's 132 cubicles in there. Um, that's the, we aim for cows to be in there for sort of three weeks pre-calving. Yeah. Um, having designed that a few years ago, it was designed based on a flying herd, um, where obviously we're not calving and buying in fresh carved heifers, so we. We're only calving 75% of the herd at that time. We've now moved to breeding our own replacements. We've just started calving down our own heifers. So we'll now be calving down 30 to 40 more animals per month than what we were before, which will apply a bit more pressure on this yard. So when we design that new shed, we may well look for a separate heifer 
calving facility to separate out the cows and the heifers as well. Okay, and why, um, why calve them separately? Is it just because of pressure. Oh, just more, numbers. Because of them. pressure yeah. and, uh, and also it just helps in terms of, we always know first lactation cows do better in a separate group, okay. so it would just aid that, but yeah. Um, yeah. The diet of the dry cow, there's a lot of straw on it, is there? A lot of straw, so yeah, we're feeding. Um, oh, they're having a pre calving mineral, protected choline, um, to help with liver function. They're on five kilos of grass, uh, six straw, nine maize, four and a half of a protein blend, and then we add six kilos of water to the diet as well to sort of drive intakes. So how many kilos of dry matter is that roughly? Oh, now you're asking. I think that's about 13 and a half. Okay, I yeah. think, okay. yeah. Fine. So how many days are a cow, is it, or say, how, how long is the, the lactation of a cow? How many days typically on average? Typically, we're sort of calving interval at the minute of 378 days, yeah. um, and we have a dry period of average uh, about 50, 50 days. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, just over th about 320 something days. So you have a nice arrangement there for your um, implements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're well stored. It doesn't get used very often there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It tends to just Hence get left where there. the last place, <laughs> last person left it. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, Lean can keep things a little bit tidier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are these some of the original buildings here then? So yeah, these four kennel buildings with outdoor feed passage. Um, these were built all in 2007. Um, we much prefer the newer type of building with the head-to-head -head sand cubicles. These are tail to tail with central uh, central scrape passage. Yeah. Um, these cubicles were designed based on a grazing cow, so they are a little bit shorter. Yeah. So we put our first lactation cows in here because it suits them slightly better than, than a big second, third or fourth lactation cow. So, um. Miles, as we're passing the sand, this is the sand for the cubicles? Yes, that's and it. It just yeah. gets tipped here? Just gets tipped here at the minute, yeah. Every so week. every week we're having about 120 tonnes of sand, so yeah. Uh, and like I said before, bedding up three times a week on the mattresses, bedding up once a week on the deep beds. Yeah. Um, long term, there's a plan here to cover this yard. I'd like to build a shed off here, a lean-to, for sand and a straight shed for okay. all my feed. So. Yeah. Yeah.